بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Over the last few weeks we have been speaking about the family of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه we spoke about his parents, his mother, his father. We spoke about his ancestry. We spoke about his siblings, his brothers and his sisters. Now tonight, inshallah, we want to speak about the wives and the children of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. The first wife of Ali radiallahu an, of course, was Fatima bint Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His first marriage was to Fatima, the daughter of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Fatima radiallahu anha, she is from the greatest women who ever lived. She is one of the greatest women who ever lived. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kamula min rijali kathir, walam yakmul min nisa'i illa arba' Asiya bint Muzahim. Imra'atu Fir'aun Wa Maryam Bint Imran Wa Khadija Bint Khuwailid Wa Fatima Bint Muhammad Many men have reached perfection But only four women have reached perfection And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam named those four women He said Asiya Bint Muzahim Imra'atu Fir'aun Asiya, the daughter of Muzahim, and that was the wife of Fir'aun. So Asiya, she was from the best of women, even though her husband Fir'aun was from the worst of mankind. Also the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Maryam, the daughter of Imran, being one of the women who have reached perfection. And he mentioned Khadija bint Khuwailid, and that was the first wife of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he mentioned Fatima bint Muhammad, Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are the four women in history who have reached perfection: Asiya, Maryam, Khadija, and Fatima. May Allah subhanahu wa taala be pleased with all of them. So Fatima radiyallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even amongst the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she has a special status. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had four daughters. Zainab, Ruqiya, Umm Kulthum, and Fatima. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala be pleased with all of them. But Fatima Radiallahu Anha, even amongst her sisters, she has the highest status. So Ali Radiallahu An was married to the greatest daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatima Radiallahu Anha. And this is a great honor for Ali radiallahu an, and it also shows the great status that Ali radiallahu an held in the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he gave his daughter to him in marriage. And before Ali radiallahu an married Fatima radiallahu anha, a number of men approached the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking for Fatima's hand in marriage, but he refused all of them, and. He gave his daughter to Ali radiallahu an. So this is a great honor for Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Now of course Ali radiallahu an, while he was married to Fatima radiallahu anha, and they had a long marriage, they were married for many years until Fatima radiallahu anha passed away. During their marriage, Ali radiallahu an never took a second wife. He was only married to her while she was alive, and he did not marry anyone else while Fatima radiallahu anha was alive and this was out of respect and honor for Fatima radiallahu anha and her status and also out of respect and honor for her father the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you're married to the daughter of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how can you marry someone else along with her so ali radiallahu anha he did not marry anyone else while he was married to Fatima, the daughter of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and this was an honor to Fatima radiallahu anha. This was to show honor to Fatima radiallahu anha and was to show honor to her father, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu 
عليه وسلم. So Fatima رضي الله عنها was the only wife of Ali رضي الله عنه until she died and she died shortly after her father the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. After the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away Fatima رضي الله عنها lived after that for only a short period of six months and there is a narration where it is mentioned that when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was in his final illness when he was about to leave this world he said something quietly to Fatima رضي الله عنها and after he said this to her she started to cry then he said something else to her quietly and she started to laugh so our mother Aisha رضي الله عنها asked Fatima رضي الله عنها after the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away Aisha رضي الله عنها asked Fatima رضي الله عنها what was that that the Prophet ﷺ had said to you and then you cried, then he said something else to you and you laughed. And then Fatima radiallahu anha, she told Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that he said to me that he feels his time is coming soon, that he will be leaving this dunya soon, that his time of death is approaching. So of course that made Fatima radiallahu anha cry. And the second thing that he said that made her laugh is that he told her that, that she would be the first one of the family to join him. Meaning that she would pass away shortly after the Prophet ﷺ. And this made her laugh. So she was not afraid of death. She was not even sad to die. She was happy that she would be joining her father, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, soon. So she lived only six months after the passing away of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And actually Fatima radiallahu anha, she was the only child of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that outlived him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had seven children. He had four daughters and he had three sons. All of them passed away during his lifetime. He buried all of his children except one. The only child that outlived him was Fatima radiallahu anha and she only lived six months after her father sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. So after Fatima radiallahu anha passed away, then and only then did Ali radiallahu an remarry. He married a number of women after Fatima radiallahu anha passed away. He married eight other women, but of course he was never married to more than four at one time. But the total number of wives he had after Fatima radiallahu anha, he had eight more wives total, with no more than four at a time. From the wives of Ali radiallahu anha that he married after Fatima radiallahu anha passed away, Ali radiallahu anha married Ummul Banin bint Hizam. Also, he married Layla bint Mas'ud, and she was from the tribe of Banu Tamim. Also, from the wives of Ali radiallahu anha, was Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha. Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha, she was from the great women of Islam. She was from the very early Muslims. And before Ali radiallahu anha married her, she had already been widowed twice. She was first married to the brother of Ali radiallahu anha. She was married to Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anha. And she actually migrated to Habasha with her husband, with Ja'far radiallahu anha. And her son Abdullah ibn Ja'far was actually born in Habasha. And Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was martyred in the battle of Mu'tah. And Asma bint Umais then became a widow. And after that, then Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an married Asma bint Umais. So you can tell that she's a woman of, of very high status. She was married to Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and then she was married to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. And then after Abu Bakr radiallahu an passed away at the end of his khilafah, she became a widow again. Asma became a widow again. And then after that, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an married her. So she was a very honorable woman from the very early Muslims. Also from the wives of Ali radiallahu an was as-Sahba. Um Habib bint Rabi'ah from the tribe of Banu Taghlib. Also from the wives of Ali radiallahu an was Umama bint Abil Asi. Umama bint Abil Asi, she was the granddaughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umama's mother was Zainab. 
bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And perhaps you are aware of the hadith where it is narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was praying, when he was leading his companions in the congregational prayer, he would be carrying his granddaughter Umama while he was leading the prayer. And then when he would make sujood, he would put her down. And when he would stand back up, he would pick her back up. So he would carry Umama, his granddaughter, while he was praying. So Umama, radiallahu anha, when she grew up, Ali, radiallahu anha, married her. So she was the granddaughter of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, married to Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anha. Also from the wives of Ali, radiallahu anha, was Khawla bint Ja'far ibn Qais al Hanafiya. She was from the tribe of Banu Hanifa, a very big, powerful tribe. Khawla bint Ja'far ibn Qais. Also from the wives of Ali radiallahu an was Umm Sa'id bint Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi. Umm Sa'id was the daughter of Urwa ibn Mas'ud. Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi, he was a very powerful leader of the Arabs and he was very well respected amongst all of the Arabs such to the extent that the Arabs wanted to put him in a position of making him a king there's a verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ that the disbelievers who disbelieved in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they used to say that if this Quran is really from Allah then why was it not sent down to a great man from one of the two cities? The two cities that are being referred to here are Mecca and Ta'if. So they were saying, why was not the Qur'an revealed to a great man from one of these two cities? And the, the, the two men that they were referring to, one from Mecca and one from Ta'if, the one from Mecca they were referring to was Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira. He was someone that the Arabs respected and they held in high esteem and the one from Ta'if that they were referring to that they considered a great man was Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi so Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi was someone who had a high status amongst the Arabs and his daughter was Umm Sa'id bint Urwa and Ali radiallahu an married her also from the wives of Ali radiallahu an was Muhayyah bint Imri al-Qais. Imri al-Qais was a famous ruler of the Arabs from the tribe of Banu Kalb. And his daughter was Muhayyah bint Imri al-Qais. And Ali radiallahu anh married her as well. So the total number of wives that Ali radiallahu anh had throughout his life, including Fatima radiallahu anha, the total wives that he had, he had nine wives. But while he was married to Fatima radiallahu anha, he was only married to her. He did not have a second wife. But after she passed away, then he was married to eight other women. But he was never married to more than four at one time. So these were the wives of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anha. Now let's talk a little bit about the children of Ali radiallahu anha that he had from these wives. Of course, from his first marriage to Fatima radiallahu anha, he had his two most well-known famous children, the grandsons of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Hasan and Al-Husayn radiallahu anhuma, the beloved grandsons of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah, the leaders of the youth of Jannah, Al-Hasan and Al-Husayn. It is also mentioned in some narrations that Ali and Fatima had another son that they named Muhsin, but he died at a very young age as a child. But there is no authentic confirmation about this. Some reports mention this, but it is not authentically confirmed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Also, Ali and Fatima had two daughters, Zainab al-Kubra and Umm Kulthum al-Kubra. When you hear the term al-Kubra, it means the oldest one. And that is referring to if a person has more than one child with the same name. So for example, if someone had a child named Zainab from one wife, and then they had another child named Zainab from another wife, how do you differentiate when you are addressing 
these two or when you're referring to these two. This one is Zainab and this one is Zainab. So the older one would be known as Zainab al-Kubra and the younger one would be known as Zainab al-Sughra. And if there's one in the middle, that one would be known as Zainab al-Wusta. So this is, these terms are just to differentiate if there are multiple children with the same name. And if it's a boy, for example, Muhammad, if someone had multiple children named Muhammad, the oldest one would be Muhammad al-Akbar. The middle one would be Muhammad al-Awsat. And the youngest one would be Muhammad al-Asghar. Right? And if it's a girl, for example, Zainab, it would be Zainab al-Kubra for the oldest one, Zainab al-Wusta for the middle one, and Zainab al-Sughra for the youngest one. So this is just to dif differentiate between multiple children that may have the same name. So Zainab al-Kubra and Umm Kulthum al-Kubra, they were the two daughters of Ali and Fatima radiallahu anhuma. After Fatima radiallahu anha passed away, Ali radiallahu anha, he married other women. From those women, as we mentioned, he married Umm al-Banin bint Hizam. And he had four sons with Umm al-Banin. They were Al-Abbas ibn Ali and Ja'far ibn Ali and Abdullah ibn Ali and Uthman ibn Ali. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he named one of his children Uthman. So for those who say, you know, who make rumors that Ali radiallahu anhu had a problem with Uthman and he didn't agree with Uthman radiallahu anhu becoming the Khalifa, people who make up these, these stories and these rumors, what better proof is there against them than Ali radiallahu anhu himself naming one of his own children Uthman. That means he had high regard and high respect for Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. So all of these sons that Ali radiallahu anhu had with Umm al-Baneen, al-Abbas and Ja'far and Abdullah and Uthman, all of them were martyred with al Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhu at Karbala. So that was a great tragedy. From the wife of Ali radiallahu anhu, Layla bint Mas'ud, he had two sons as well. He had Ubaidullah ibn Ali and Abu Bakr ibn Ali. So he named one of his sons, Uthman, and he named another one of his sons, Abu Bakr. So for those who say that Ali radiallahu anhu had a problem with Abu Bakr and he didn't agree with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu becoming the ruler of the ummah after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away, for those who claim that Ali radiallahu anhu had these issues with Abu Bakr and he did not respect Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, for those who make up these false claims, what stronger proof can you have against them than the fact that Ali radiallahu anhu he named one of his own children after Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr ibn Ali. So this is proof that Ali radiallahu anhu held Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in great regard. So these were the two sons that Ali radiallahu anhu had with Layla bint Mas'ud. Ubaidullah and Abu Bakr. And it is said that they were also killed. These two sons were also martyred with al Hussein radiallahu anhu at Karbala. From Ali radiallahu anhu's wife, Asma bint Umais radiallahu anha, they had two children, Yahya and Muhammad al-Asghar. Muhammad, the youngest one named Muhammad. And it is said that Muhammad al-Asghar was also killed at Karbala. So Ali radiallahu anhu, he had so many sons who were martyred in Karbala. That was a great tragedy for the ummah. From the wife of Ali radiallahu anhu, As-Sahba bint Rabi'ah, he had two children, a son and a daughter. And guess what the name of his son was from this marriage? He named his son Umar ibn Ali. MashaAllah. So for those who say that Ali radiallahu anhu had issues with Umar, had problems with Umar, what stronger proof can you have against them than the fact that Ali radiallahu anhu named one of his own sons after Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. That shows he had great regard for Umar radiallahu anhu. So now look at this. Ali radiallahu anhu named one of his sons Abu Bakr. He named one of his sons Umar. And he named one of his sons Uthman. He named his children after each one of his three predecessors. Showing that he had great respect and regard for all of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them and have mercy upon all of them. So Umar ibn Ali radiallahu anhu was the son of Ali with his wife as sahba bint Rabi'ah. He lived a long life. He lived to the age of 85 and he died in Yambu' on the Red Sea. 
And also, Ali radiallahu anh had a daughter from this marriage with a sahba and she was named Ruqiyya bint Ali. From Ali radiallahu anh's marriage to Umama bint Abil Asi. And remember, Umama is the granddaughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali and Umama, they had a son and he was named Muhammad al awsat His name was Muhammad and he was the middle child of Ali radiallahu anh that was named Muhammad, meaning Ali radiallahu anh had another son named Muhammad that was older and he had another son that was named Muhammad that was younger. So this was Muhammad al awsat That was the son of Ali radiallahu anh and Umama radiallahu anha, the granddaughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From Ali radiallahu anh's marriage to Khawla bint Ja'far from the tribe of Banu Hanifa, they had a son named Muhammad and he is Muhammad al-Akbar, the oldest son of Ali radiallahu an with the name Muhammad. He is more commonly referred to as Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyyah because his mother was from Banu Hanifa. She is, she is Hanafiyya. So this Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Ali, Muhammad al-Akbar, he is more commonly referred to as Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya and he is perhaps the most well-known of the children of Ali radiallahu an after al-Hasan and al-Husayn and he was very well known because he was a great scholar of, of Ahlul Sunnah a great scholar of Islam a great faqih and he had great love and respect for his his brothers al-Hasan and al-Husayn Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya he died in al-Ta'if and his janazah prayer was led by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an from the wife of Ali radiallahu an um Sa'id, he had two daughters, Umm al Hassan and Ramla al Kubra. And from the wife of Ali radiallahu an Muhayya bint Imri al Qais, they had one daughter uh, and she died as a young child. Now, Ali radiallahu an, these are some of his children. He also had a number of other daughters that are mentioned in the books of history, but it is not known from which wives these daughters came from. It is known that these are the daughters of Ali, but it is not known which wife was the mother uh, of these daughters, right? So from the daughters of Ali radiallahu an were Umhani also, Umhani ibn Ali, Maymuna ibn, uh, uh, Umhani bint Ali, uh, Maymuna bint Ali, uh, Zainab al-Sughra, Ramla al-Sughra, Umm Kulthum al-Sughra, Fatima, Umama, Khadija, Umm Al-Kiram, Umm Salama, Umm Ja'far, Jumana, Nufaysa. These are all Banat Ali, radiallahu anhu, right? And he had a total of 31 children. Ali, radiallahu anhu, had a total of 31 children, 14 sons and 17 daughters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased and have mercy upon them all. So 31 children, mashallah, he left behind a great legacy of children who served Islam in the best way. And one great honor for Ali radiallahu anhu is that all of the descendants of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose lineage has continued even to this day, they all come from Al-Hasan and al Hussein. Anyone who is a de descendant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's living in this day and age, they trace their lineage either back to Al-Hasan or al Hussein, And both of them, al Hassan and al Hussein, were the sons of Ali radiallahu anhu. So that means anyone who is a descendant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is also a descendant of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And that's a great honor for Ali radiallahu anhu. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with Ali radiallahu anhu and to be pleased with all of the other companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ameen. Inshallah next week we will continue with our study of the biography of Amir al-Muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Barakallahu feekum. Wallahu alam sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.